Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video entitled Three Pillars of Machine Intelligence. The three pillars I'll be referring to are collectivism, connectionism, and Darwinism. Collectivism, I take to refer to the idea that minds may be organised along similar lines to societies, in that they consist of a collection of semi-autonomous interacting agents. Connectionism is the idea underlying neural networks that you can build a brain and a reinforcement learning machine out of a series of nodes and links using thresholding and pulsed messages. And then Darwinism, I take to refer to the idea that you can build a system which learns using a trial and error process and develops a closeness of fit between itself and the environment. Um, so such systems exhibit inheritance, um, variation and selection between the variants. In this context, collectivism refers to the idea that you can construct minds along similar lines to the way societies are constructed. So, the idea was popularised in this book by Marvin Minsky, entitled The Society of Mind. I'll start by reading a section from that. To start to see how minds are like societies, try this. Pick up a cup of tea. Your grasping agents want to keep hold of the cup. Your balancing agents want to keep the tea from spilling out. Your thirst agents want you to drink the tea. Your moving agents want to get the cup to your lips. Yet none of these consume your mind as you roam about the room talking to your friends. You scarcely think at all about balance. Balance has no concern with grasp. Grasp has no interest in thirst. And thirst is not involved with your social problems. Why not? Because they can depend on one another. If each does its own little job, the really big job will get done by all of them together, drinking tea. So, um, the idea draws an analogy between minds and societies and says that minds operate in a similar manner to societies in that they consist of a number of independent agents which act together in order to produce the resulting effect. Um, you can see similar things in human societies. So, for example, a company consists of a large number of um, semi-independent agents and they act together to produce results which none of the in individual agents could do alone um, by operating in a cooperative fashion. And um, the idea that minds are like societies allows us to use the insights that we've gleaned from economics about how societies operate in order to assist us with building with minds. So um, one of the problems that you face in building a company is how to deal with um, individual agents who promote their own interests at the expense of the company. So there's systems for identification and um, immune systems that deal with um, agents from outside who've come in to um, cause havoc within the cooperating agency and um, the possibility of dealing with um, competition between agents who are part of the company. Um, the human systems um, we only developed cooperation when we were quite advanced as individual agents. So um, until relatively recently, human beings didn't form large-scale cooperative units um, and instead spent more time in conflict with one another. Um, however, um, it may well not be necessary to wait until the individual agents reach such a high level before cooperation kicks in. And you can see examples of that in other areas of biology. So ants' nests are a reasonable example. There you've got cooperation arising between agents, um, even though the agents are nowhere near human level in complexity, and they produce ants' nests, which exhibit um, emergent behaviour at a much higher level than the individual ants. And um, multicellularity is, of course, another example of cooperation emerging even between agents that aren't terribly sophisticated. So we may not need to build agents that are anywhere near as sophisticated as human beings are in order to get them to form complex um, cooperative structures um, which exhibit emergent behaviours that are um, kind of more complex and interesting than the behaviours of the individual agents themselves. Um, another possibility, um, once you grasp the idea of a uh, mind as a society is that you could have a society and then a society of societies. So hum humanity as a whole consists of a complex society and each individual human also consists of a society where our bodies are made out of thousands of individual cells that all operate in a collective um, fashion. So you've got a kind of hierarchy of um, collectivism um, between several different layers there. 
um, and you can see collectivism operating in existing machines to some extent. So you have um, the idea of agents within software. Um, there's also ant colony optimization strategies and um, demons, the idea that the operating system has a number of independent um, components that run in the background and operate together. Um, and exactly where collectivism fits into machine intelligence, um, it's not terribly clear at what level um, kind of collectivism will play a part, but um, seems quite likely collectivism has played a big role in biology so far, and it helps build large systems out of smaller systems that are comprehensible. So um, it's quite likely that collectivism will play um, a role in the development of machine intelligence. My second pillar of machine intelligence is connectionism. And I learned about that by reading these books in the 1980s, Parallel Distributed Processing by Rommel Hart and McClelland. Um, these books represented the connectionist revival of the 1980s, basically. So connectionism and neural networks had fallen into disrepute at the hands of Marvin Minsky in his percep Perceptions book. And um, these books spearheaded a revival of the idea. And I read them at the time in 1988, as I recall, and um, I was quite inspired by them. I thought that they represented the most likely path to machine intelligence. And um, nothing since then has changed my mind, really. Um, connectionism is a type of bio-inspired computing, so it looks at the human brain and abstracts away all the irrelevant details and basically leaves a network of nodes and links um, with information about how the nodes use thresholding and pulse code modulation in order to communicate with one another, and also um, rules about how new links form and old links die away. So um, links form between nodes that are synchronized with one another and um, decay between nodes that are uh, um, out of sync with each other and you get kind of different types of synapse depending on um, whether or not the um, nodes are positively correlated in their um, activity or negatively correlated um, and um, it's kind of um, collectivism writ small in some respects so it's the suggestion that you can get um, behavior as intelligent as that of a human out of um, thousands of tiny um, mindless um, agents which are incredibly simple basically um, all operating together um, and neural networks have come in for some criticism in recent years um, supposedly they produce networks that are incomprehensible and unmaintainable um, and also as a result of the incomprehensibility um, unsafe and and um, hard to edit and debug. Um, but um, I don't think these problems are particularly serious. Um, I still expect um, connectionism to be the foundation for um, most of the successful machine intelligence projects. My third pillar of machine intelligence is Darwinism. And I'm going to represent that symbolically using Charles Darwin's The Origin of Species. Darwinism is a kind of process where information persists via being copied and the copies are not exact so there's a variety of different variants that are produced and then there's selection between the different copies so that you get a process involving differential reproductive success of the variants that are generated and that kind of process often results in a kind of an adaptive fit between um, some aspect of the organism and the environment in which it finds itself um, and you, you, the result is a kind of optimization process and you can see that um, most clearly in genetic algorithms where the whole point of running the genetic algorithm in the first place is to find some kind of optimization target in a search space. Um, something similar goes on in Darwinian evolution where it's like a competition to find the fittest organism um, and you can see machine intelligence in a similar way it's another kind of trial and error search process basically organisms are trying to find the optimal actions um, out of the range of all the possible things that they could do in order to lead themselves towards the states of the environment they regard as goal states so they're trying to manipulate things towards a kind of target in an optimization space um, and you can see a kind of Darwinian process taking place in the mind during development. So there's um, the cells within the body reproduce themselves, and some of them do better than others, and some of the cells are neurons, and um, there's a massive um, die-off of neurons during the developmental process. So there's a kind of selection between the neurons that takes place, and then on a kind of grander scale, there's also selection between axons within the brain. Um, so um, axons that do well um, sprout more axons from the same kind of signaling route um, and axons that are um, transmitting signals that are out of sync with the other neurons that they're connected to um, atrophy and die so there's a kind of constant um, regeneration process where the successful parts of the brain um, grow more and the parts of the brain which don't seem to be contributing much towards um, the synchrony, synchronous processes within the brain um, die off so there's a kind of selection 
um, at that level within the mind. And then there's um, selection between ideas within the brain. Um, ideas kind of compete with each other for brain space in what I call um, intracranial mimetics. And then there's also um, intracranial mimetics, which is um, kind of Darwinian evolution within society on a, a grander scale, um, selection between ideas um, in order to try and get into brains, basically. Um, so that's my third pillar of um, machine intelligence. Um, lastly, um, these are the processes that I regard as being um, important ones in the development of machine intelligence initially. So they're the ones that I imagine will get us to human level. Um, once we've gone um, past that and we're having machines building other machines, then it's possible that they won't use quite the same principles as we've used to get off the ground in the first place. So um, there won't be so much use of random mutations. Instead, optimization processes will be done by um, kind of intelligent optimization rather than a more blind trial and error search process. Um, and similarly with um, collectivism, um, possibly collectivism will be kind of refactored out of the, um, the machine minds and they'll become more homogenous and less oriented into hierarchical structures um, which bear resemblances to society. Um, so these aren't necessarily ultimate principles, but they're how I think that we'll get kind of to first base in machine intelligence. Um, so um, enjoy.